Ollante Tabo, probably one of the most visually perplexing sites within Peru, claimed to be that of the Incas and at an altitude of 2,792 meters above sea level. Once one takes a good look at this place, it becomes near impossible to believe that the Incan civilization, with their access to such limited technologies, could have created such a place. During the Inca Empire, Ollante Tabo was the royal estate of Emperor Pacacuti, according to academia. When he conquered the region, he built the town and the ceremonial center within. It is such an impressive, perfectly placed strategic structure that, at the time of the Spanish conquest, it served as a stronghold for Manco Inco Yupanqui, leader of the Inca resistance. However, as mentioned many times on our channel, how could a civilization create such astonishing architecture at such an early time within known history? How did they create some of these sites? What purpose could they have served? Some of the ruins that can be found in Peru, and in particular Ollante Tambo, you cannot help but wonder if, for example, the giant stairs carved into the hillside were intended for human use then why create them to such enormous scales? According to the history books, around the mid-15th century, the Incan emperor Pacacuti conquered Ollantaytambo, including the surrounding region. All were incorporated into his personal estate. The emperor then claims to have rebuilt the town with sumptuous constructions and undertook extensive harassing and masterfully irrigating the Urubamba Valley notably without any prior knowledge of these techniques known of. Were these giant ledge steps once used by giants? Or possibly, had a use similar to the ancient site known as Moray? Moray also claimed to be Incan. This mind-boggling site had an astonishing purpose. It seems the builders of this enormous structure were masters of horticulture. They had somehow figured out that by creating these raised ledges at particular angles to the seasonal winds and sun, using this to slowly acclimatize plants previously not suitable to that climate over many generations. Perhaps this is what Oliente Tambo was used for. Moray is little shared by academia. Indeed, its existence and one's function is difficult to explain with modern paradigms. And although not giants, we feel the site's once use was no less impressive. Olante Tambo, within Peru, is undoubtedly one of the most incredible ruins to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many people have been mystified by the site's characteristics, some even suggesting that its shelf-like construction was once created as steps for giants, its real original use, however, being no less remarkable. The so-called pre-Incas responsible for its original build did so with the intention of utilizing these layers of soil to slowly acclimatize plants that were once not used to a certain altitude through a process of selective breeding, eventually taking them far higher than they were ever found before, making it possible to cultivate said herbs, fruits, or vegetables within their high-altitude sanctuaries, once virtually impenetrable fortresses so that with these newly adjusted phenotypes of plants, and with the aid of what is the subject of this video, could stay high in the mountains virtually indefinitely, self-sustained thanks to the incredible achievements of Olen Tetabo. The Inkamasana water temple being the final piece of this now lost people's armory, for although the horticultural knowledge displayed by this lost civilization is evidence of advanced culture, their abilities to control the path of water is another of the pieces of evidence which not only proves that this people were highly capable, but were also unquestionably advanced in their execution of said feats. For although these irrigation systems or drinking water inflows are many thousands of years old, most still work to this day. Some of these water features were so well made that even modern re-inhabitors still use several of these systems as they even rival that of the modern system which would replace it, bringing water to the locations. Dr. Richard Mixod, who studied the water sources of Incamasana in Oletantabo, led a team of researchers from the University of Virginia, known as the Wright Water Engineers, 
from the Wright Paleo Hydrological Institute and archaeologists Armenda Gabaja Oviedo and Dr. Gordon McCowan, all of whom conducted reverse engineering in an attempt to back-engineer the remarkable achievements seen at the Water Temple. Located north of the Manuraki Canal in the sacred valley of the Incas, at an altitude of 3,000 meters, this sophisticated water complex consists of rooms, open spaces, beautiful complex pools, ornamental fountains, waterfalls, and buried channels. These pre-Incan accomplishments display an intimate knowledge of so-called modern hydraulic principles, even building their channels in such a way as to avoid hydraulic jumps. The Water Temple's architecture and hydraulic works define Incamasana as a high-status sanctuary for worship of water. Intricate and carefully executed cliff carvings parallel to the Water Temple add a mystical dimension to the temple's original purpose, which is currently claimed to have been the worship of water. Ancient roads also left by this same elusive group unquestionably tie Olente Tabo and the Water Temple to this once great, now lost civilization's empire. Who built the Incamasana Water Temple? How did they build it? Why is the polygonal masonry, something which ancient Peru is synonymous with, found at many of the world's ancient relics? Who were these ancient people? Where did they go? It is undoubtedly an incredible place, one which we find highly compelling. From their curious writings made upon cuneiform blocks, there are endless areas of intrigue when it comes to ancient Mesopotamia, a fascinating and rare civilization which had an equally striking appearance, often adorned with trinkets, with tightly braided, often thick flowing hair, with royals regularly depicted as giants. It is also a very special area of interest for our so-called fringe research. The reason for this is that Mesopotamia is one of those rare chapters of ancient civilization which, regardless of all previously noted, has strangely continued to be accepted by mainstream institutions, field studies apparently still flowing. As previously mentioned, this astonishing, and we feel, far older than currently claimed civilization, is drenched with marvels of seemingly impossible ancient craftsmanship many of which near impossible to explain in regards to currently claimed history. The reoccurring theme one finds when another post-Ice Age technologically regressed ancestor moves in to utilize these structures offered safety will, in turn, leave behind an archaeological timeline. This then allows for an inaccurate and often blatantly ignorant dating. But to muddy said waters, are then met with a detailed, competent reconstruction of said lifestyles, religious beliefs, systems, etc., etc., all in regards to a permitted ancestor, rather than any details or a logical explanation as to their technologies or constructions. However, as mentioned, going back to the recurring event we notice is the briefest of these supposed builders' legacies, for when one has laid claim to an antediluvian wonder, the lack of understandings regarded the fortress's strength, or indeed how to efficiently use them, the ingenious design of some of the most impressive fortresses of Peru, Sacsayhuaman, Kulap for example, we posit, if under the control of the original constructors, would have been near impossible to evade and were completely self-sustained. Yet the academically claimed builders all seem to conveniently fold within less than a few centuries at most. However, the subject of most importance and currently the most compelling exhibits of an ancient advanced civilization is the nature of many of the artifacts, either recovered or now documented as having been depicted across much of their stone-cut artwork. And across Mesopotamia, notably the Assyrian civilization, they had achieved levels of technological sophistication simply impossible to have achieved in the brief, currently attested chronological life of said civilizations. Whether the Assyrian civilization and many others spanning ancient Mesopotamia have indeed been accurately identified, 
then an explanation for the array of remarkable technologies they had developed becomes a very hard area of archaeology to describe. Scuba divers, secret teachings, sophisticated levels and practices of law and healthcare, and most notably, and indeed the most vital section of the civilization skill set, their intimate understandings that lay within their ability to create irrigation and agricultural systems, which rival even those of the modern day. These tremendous abilities tend to make us suspect that either the dating of Mesopotamia is drastically off, or these feats of engineering were, like many others, adopted by this later settlement, ultimately decoded and claimed as an invention of their own. Astonishing legends of the past, accompanied by an astonishing level of sophisticated astronomical knowledge, is another crucial factor which not only indicates what we are attesting, but what we feel could have only come from an extremely old source, tributes to which seemingly found incorporated into nearly all surviving relics. Yet, as if academia claim, this ancient civilization merely wielded stone and very later bronze tools. The question is, how did they create such astonishing ancient ruins? The multi-ton Lamassu, a mysterious stone-winged horse we have covered previously on numerous occasions, it seems just like that of the so-called pre-Incas, displayed levels of sophistication specifically around horticulture, far in advance of what we should have logically presumed to see. It is as if they had a helping hand by a far more ancient yet highly advanced intellect somewhere within antiquity. Are these Upart surviving remnants, memories left by a pre-cataclysmic civilization, once capable of such sophisticated irrigating and building on steep mountain land with ease? we can for now only hypothesize. It is a pursuit we find highly compelling. <laughs>